Hi everyone, welcome so far. Um, thanks for joining us today for the webinar. We'll wait a few more minutes to let some more people log in. And welcome, Lauren. Thanks, Chris. If you're watching, uh, drop us a line in the chat function there and tell us um, that you're here and perhaps who you are. Hoping for some familiar faces. Actually. Did you invite your whole team, Lauren, to come and watch? <laughs> no way. Absolutely not. <laughs> Hey, Susie. They know, they know all this stuff anyway. <laughs> Every day is a learning opportunity. I tell my kids. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, Lee. While we wait, Lauren, I've got a, uh, just out of interest, um, how did you get into the social impact sector? There's, everyone has oh, a different story, so I'd love to hear. Everyone wants to know. Yeah, so I, um, I volunteered all the way through school and wanted to knew that I wanted to do something in social impact, but knew that I also needed to get a job and earn an income afterwards. So <laughs> I studied commerce just for the job, um, but really just wanted to do international relations and study that as well. And then my first job out of uni was an intern in a corporate social responsibility team, which is kind of unheard of, um, but it was at an IT company and that led me to where I am. And what a choice, fantastic. Yeah, just right place, right time, right post yeah. on LinkedIn, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good copywriting makes a difference. <laughs> yeah, oh no, 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 I, yeah. I saw the right post on LinkedIn, yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Not even, not yeah. even me, yeah. Cool, so the numbers are clocking up there. Hey Gina, hey Ed, good to see you, Sonia. <clears throat> so we'll almost get started. While we wait here, I just wanted to provide a bit more context about Benevity for those of you that are not familiar with who we are. Um, we provide social impact and community investment uh, cloud solutions to the world's leading companies, helping them to deliver on their uh, ESG and sustainability strategies. Um, and we're really proud to work with the world's leading organizations such as Atlassian, uh, Microsoft, Apple, Nike, et cetera, that use our, our platforms um, to really engage their people and their customers um, and work with their nonprofit partners more effectively. I'm uh, Chris, the Managing Director here for Benevity in Australia and New Zealand. Um, and I'm really excited about today's conversation to talk more about skills-based volunteering specifically. Uh, for those of you that have read our recent report on volunteering, there's some great insights in there. Um, and we're seeing the evolution of skills-based volunteering uh, really take shape within these larger corporations and helping to drive significant impact um, with nonprofit partners on the other side, going beyond just outcomes into true impact. I'm very excited to hear from Lauren uh, some of her insights as she's been on a bit of a journey over the last few years <laughs> at that lesson. <laughs> cool, before we start, um, we're going to run a quick quick little poll and we will have a time for questions at the end of the webinar. So we'll leave about 10 minutes for questions. As we go through it, um, please put your questions in the Q&A section at the top um, of the screen there, and then we can go through them um, at the end of the session. So I'm going to feed the poll here. Let me see if I do it correctly. This is the first time I'm using this platform. Let's see. You should see the poll appearing on your screens. And there's a few options there for you to choose from. So I'd love for, for you all to vote for your favorite or most relevant uh, selection here in this poll. If someone hasn't faced significant challenges, they should be doing this webinar. <laughs> Exactly. I'd love to hear yes. from them. We want, your, we want your details if you have no challenges. <laughs> just for any, anyone that's just joined, there's a little poll up here. If you could give us your insights around your skills based volunteering program or anything that resonates here with you specifically. Yeah, 
it looks like it looks like everyone's struggling with appropriate volunteering opportunities and in lacking interest. Mm -hmm. Okay, for anyone that's just joined, there's a little poll up on the screen. If you can just give us your insights around these questions. It looks so far um, with a significant majority in the votes that most folks and companies are struggling to find the appropriate volunteering opportunities. And that's definitely where this webinar and Lauren's insights from Atlassian um, <laughs> will give us some tips and tricks there because I think most organizations struggle with that. And then a lack of employee interest in time and measuring impact are also pretty high. Um, these are all areas we see within our client community that's, um, that can be challenging. Um, so it'll be great to discuss that. So as mentioned, um, please post your questions in the Q&A as we go through the session. And um, then we can jump into those at the end of the webinar. So Lauren, we're going we're gonna to kick off if you're ready to go. I'm ready. Awesome. So could you start off just by telling us a little bit about your role at Atlassian and give us an overview of your um, holistic social impact program and how your role fits into that, please? Sure. So I am a social impact manager in the Atlassian Foundation team, um, have been there for three years. And my role now is to help nonprofits and social enterprises to improve the ways that they work with our products and practices. Um, for the past three years, I've been running our skilled volunteering program um, and I still run skilled volunteering programs, um, but they've evolved. So the um, my foundation team is made up of kind of several units and we sit, we're very much part of the business, but uh, we are separate to sustainability and DEI. Um, and within our team, we look at education partnerships. Um, we look at helping other businesses to increase their impact, um, mostly with our relationship with Pledge 1%. And we also um, do all the regular employee enablement programs, volunteering and giving. Awesome. I know Atlassian has a really phenomenal program with all your people around the world getting getting involved at a really high level. So um, we'd really appreciate your time today and your insights. I think it's very valuable for everyone here. Um, so since you launched, you know, the real focus on skills based volunteering and the program that you've been involved in for the last three years, um, what were some of the most significant challenges you faced throughout the process um, and some of the lessons that you learned as it evolved? Mm. Let me give everyone a little bit of context because it will help um, with understanding these challenges. So when I came onto the Atlassian Foundation three years ago, I was tasked with setting up a skill volunteering program from scratch. Um, and there was a goal of 100 projects completed in about six months. Um, so it was it was designed for scale. And over the past three years, we've had um, 400 projects completed for over 300 organizations um, and about 70% of projects were completed. So we had even more than that commence, uh, but 70% completed. So just to give you the scale um, of what that was. And essentially any nonprofit um, could apply for the program um, and could really ask for anything. We didn't want to dictate exactly what they needed. Um, we really wanted them to think about the most pressing problem that they were having. Um, and so we match volunteers, we put together teams, and we set them off on their way to deliver those projects. Um, and through that, we had amazing projects. Um, you know, there were some really great collaborations, really great volunteers. Um, but there were also some very significant challenges. Um, the first one being that obviously when you open up the floodgates and say, hey, ask us anything, nonprofits will ask us for anything. <laughs> um, and, you know, a lot of the time we can say, yeah, we could make that work. You know, I know someone who has that skill and can service that nonprofit. Um, but what we had there was massive breadth in terms of all the different projects, which meant that our team needed to be, you know, have enough knowledge of all those different things to put together the right teams um, for those projects. Um, the second thing that um, was a challenge was um, 
recruiting volunteers, but more than that, the volunteers having the time um, and also retention. If anyone here is in the tech industry, you know that it's been a tumultuous few years, rounds of layoffs. Um, what happens when you know your volunteer on a project is laid off? How do you fill that gap? Plus, everyone who is left in the business is scrambling to fill the needs of uh, the business um, and doesn't have time for volunteering. So that was kind of the second challenge. Um, we also found that there were so many projects and, you know, the, the intention was there. People want to do this work, but when push comes to shove, having the time to give to it just wasn't sufficient. Um, and the third thing was that if anyone's done design thinking, when you start looking at a problem, you know, you should really um, dive into the problem, figure it out, and likely the solution is not what you think it was when you started which means that you might need a completely different set of volunteers with different skills. Um, and so that evolving scope led to many projects kind of halting or stalling. Um, and, you know, then we'd need to create a new volunteer team um, that had different skills. So they were the, the three main. Um, and the final one I'd say is that when we looked at measuring impact, so what we wanted to know was, has this project had a meaningful impact on your organisation? And largely the response for the finished projects was yes, but that was at the end of the project. How do we know that those outcomes are sustained over a period of time? And often there, were, there wasn't the skill transfer to make that happen. Um, so they were some of the, the main challenges. It's very interesting. I think that there's often a misconception with uh, skills based volunteering that it is very one off transactional. Somebody has four hours to give uh, of their skills and then they walk away and, and they've made an impact. But it's so much um, more difficult than, than everyone realizes uh, because you have to understand what the need is and whether you actually have the skills internally to provide that nonprofit with the right support versus implementing a system that is not going to be good for them in the long run, right? By accident, because it might be the yeah. system you know really well, it might not be something they should be using for what they're trying to achieve. Um, so I 100% agree with you. We often see this where the analysis and actually understanding the problem is so important versus just trying to jump in with the solution. Yeah, absolutely. And how has that then evolved your program from those learnings? Like what, what have you now changed for the future iteration of your skills-based volunteering program? Yeah. So um, we did a strategy refresh in ending in October last year. And one of the main shifts was that we wanted to shift from looking at hours and just participation to impact. And it sounds obvious, but I think that there's always a lot of pressure from businesses to really drive employee engagement as, as the main thing. Um, and it's not to say that we're not doing that. Um, but when it came to skilled volunteering, uh, the, the aim of the program is different and I'm actually in a different team um, and our main goal is to help nonprofits be healthier, more effective and more collaborative. And we've, we've designed the programs for that purpose and to serve those needs. So um, there are a couple of things that we changed. Um, one was that we wanted to provide clarity for partners. We wanted to be able to say, this is what we can offer, this is what we can't offer. Um, and to do that, to be really certain that we could offer it, we needed to align it with our core business and align it to what we do at Atlassian. If you don't know, um, Atlassian is um, a company that develops collaboration tools and software. Um, you may have heard of Trello, Jira, Confluence. And so we want to help nonprofits not only with those tools, but also the ways of working and the practices that surround those tools. Um, and in doing that, what it means is that we have teams internally that we can go to and say, hey, this is your bread and butter. This is what you do all day, every day. Can you just do it for a nonprofit? Um, I actually see Kaylee from Cowboys Community Foundation, and I know that they've just applied to our new program, Ask an Atlassian. And that program is designed to help nonprofits discover our products. You don't know what our products do, if they're right for you, come and ask one of our team members that works with our customers all the time. Um, we also wanted to shift from that kind of um, shorter term engagement um, to a longer term engagement. Ask an Atlassian is kind of a bite size, but then we also have longer term engagements with 
our core partners um, that are things like coaching, six month coaching relationships with our core partners to help them with their ways of working. And that ensures that there's a skill transfer from our people to their people. Um, and we've also added a, um, a program which is not actually volunteering, but it's working with our ecosystem partners to pay them to deliver services that can't be delivered in volunteer time um, to implement our products. And so it's not actually our employees working with nonprofits, it's theirs. We're helping other businesses to enact their pledge to give their time to nonprofits. So that's, um, that's where we've moved to. That's amazing. So you're actually leveraging your relationships with uh, business partners who are implementing Atlassian products for uh, for-profit companies to also use those skills to implement for nonprofits. That's yes, great. absolutely. And um, in terms of like the teams, it it takes away that issue of when there's you know a single volunteer that is on a project. Um, you now have a team that's kind of looking after a program. So if that volunteer goes on holidays, on leave, leaves the company, you have a whole team looking after that program. Um, and that's kind of hopefully going to resolve some of those issues. Um, I also want to add that our employees can still use their foundation time to go and work with any nonprofit that they would like on a skilled volunteering project that um, they set up and they do, they can advise. We've had um, an amazing volunteer, Daniel, and he has a close connection with the Australasian Birth Trauma Association. And he's been basically their IT guy for the past year. But it's that long term relationship that's allowed him to set up processes and really help them to move the needle on their organizational processes and systems rather than kind of a one and done. Yeah, fantastic to hear that. So that's also in our uh, volunteering report that was just released it's on our website. But having the combination of supporting company partners, and when we talk about partners, um, it would be those organizations where the, org the company, the corporation, has formed a partnership through granting, through funding, multi-year funding, often really investing in that nonprofit to help them deliver their impact and outcomes. That's generally where your most successful original skills-based volunteering projects will come from that we see is because you have a keener insight into the needs of that organization, but still then providing your employees with the option to volunteer, be that skills-based or non-skills-based with other organizations that may have a need as well. And the next, uh, um, iteration of that is you know, once you get employees into the individual volunteering and you make them aware that they have access to these programs, they can become the champions to put together that next, next skills-based volunteering project if you empower them to do so, but they have to be empowered to do so, right? Yeah, yeah. And, it, it, you know, I think they're, even though we have the smartest people, they still have that imposter syndrome of, am I the right person to do this? Um, and so yeah. they that first stage of setting it up for them um, is very helpful experience to gain that confidence. We know that in the poll, we had a number of people say that, you know, the hardest thing is identifying skills-based volunteering opportunities. So what we just spoke about, obviously partnerships is the, the one area that, you know, that would be the first step from our perspective is those nonprofits, we already have a partnership, work with them first. Any other ideas out there to, to find great projects or opportunities uh, for skills-based volunteering? I think it's almost like it's a bit of a flipped model where nonprofits don't always know what to ask for or what's possible. Um, and at first I was very reluctant to kind of give them a shopping list because it might not be what they need. But um, yeah. what is helpful is that clarity. And so, for example, um, Atlassian has a playbook. It's a whole lot of workshops. It's free. You can search it. But it's basically a whole lot of workshops um, and we're encouraging our employees to go and facilitate a play. So it's it's actually coming from our side of, okay, what do we know that we can offer and give that clarity? And so we're actually creating those opportunities and going out um, to the market rather than kind of having it inbound. Um, I think the, the real challenge with a lot of the school-based volunteering opportunities is timeliness. You know, sometimes nonprofits need it now. and volunteers aren't ready now and, and managing that is really tricky um and in, in other cases it's the opposite they're they're not quite ready for it and the volunteers are keen and so matching all that up is very tricky yeah 
being the matchmaker. I know you've we've had conversations in the past where <laughs> that was that was your life, being the matchmaker. Honestly, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Tinder for school volunteering. <laughs> Um, any suggestions or tips for the nonprofits on the call on how better to engage and find those skills that they need for their internal process, outcomes, uh, whatever that might be? Yeah, I think that um, from, from our perspective, it's really helpful if you have a real clear idea of the, the problem that you're having, um, mapping out the current state and um, identifying what like success looks like. It's much easier for us to, to say whether we can or can't help you very quickly if you've kind of mapped that out. Um, and hopefully, you know, if it's not us, it's another corporate that has those skills to do that. Um, I'm not sure if that's mm -hmm. my internet, but um, sorry if I'm breaking up. You're still there on my screen, hopefully. Yes, all good. You're okay. good? Sorry about yeah, that. Um, one other idea we've seen uh, a good way to, to identify opportunities for a closer partnership um, for, for our clients that use the platform where employees track their time of their own personal volunteer time, often they would get rewards for that. Um, they would analyze which of their employees are sitting on the boards of nonprofits and tracking that time as volunteering because those employees sitting on the board of a nonprofit often has a keen insight into what their organization might need, again, from a skills-based approach. Have you seen anything like that at Atlassian or had any success there? We've definitely had um, employees sitting on boards and, and bringing those issues to us. In some case, trying to get Confluence and Jira set up for them, which is um, obviously a good combination of resources. I think that what you've hit on here is that, that idea of building long-term relationships with um, nonprofits and encouraging our employees to do that. It's um, it's in pilot phase, but um, my colleagues have developed the most amazing rewards program, um, which is incentivizing exactly that. And we want to move our people from transactional short engagements to long, deep relationships with nonprofits. And are incentivizing them with money and free licenses and, and other things to to get them there um and so i think that's that's our biggest challenge over the next 12 months is to enable and and motivate our employees to do that um it's obviously not as easy as just jumping in a team volunteering opportunity but um that's how we think we're going to to make that impact yeah, I think it's a great, great way to look at the next step. We see this with other companies like Microsoft as well, where through <clears throat> the rewards program and incentives, and when, when we say money, it's not just money for the employee, they actually get donation credits <laughs> yes. in the system, which they, they can then direct those donations or, <clears throat> excuse me, micro grants to the nonprofit they're working with. So it actually generates some of the corporate social impact budget directly to their nonprofit by volunteering their time. So it really is a full circle and then get them access to the right products and services. Um, and we actually, in the report that I mentioned on volunteering, we see that companies that leverage rewards have 50% higher hours per employee tracked um, and, and participation in volunteering than companies that don't leverage volunteer rewards. So it is a great tool in the toolkit um, to do so. Um, any innovations you've seen outside of Nevity, any other areas or any other companies you look up to where they're doing this really well, skills-based volunteering that you're like, wow, that's that's my Apple that I want to be like, right? <laughs> yeah, I think part of our um, programs were inspired by Salesforce's Impact Exchange. They're really clear on what they offer. They, um, If anyone's looking for a CRM, they have the Salesforce Impact Exchange is basically a... Um, you can request support for your CRM and I think you get 20 hours of volunteering support. So again, it's that it's really clear. It's, it's finite. Um, and that's what we've tried to recreate with Ask an Atlassian as well. Um, yeah, I, I think that's like a lot of companies have already gone there. Maybe we're a bit, a bit slow to get there. Um, but yeah, where it's where it's limited and, and clear, I think that's um, what I aspire to. Absolutely. We're just working with Salesforce to roll out their, their new program as well. Um, I think the, the points you've made there are so crucial. It's, it's really understand what you can offer. Don't try and offer everything. 
<laughs> because you know that that often might do more harm than good. So understand internally what what skills your company is really good at offering and what outcomes they can help with um, before you make it too broad. Yeah, and unfortunately for for all of us out there that want to do good, that means saying no, and it's the hardest thing to do, especially when you you kind of know that there might be someone who knows someone, and you could probably put it together. But imagine all that time invested in things that are really clear and that you have a more certain outcome. Um, and yeah, perhaps that's that's what to focus on. Perfect. So one other area that was one of the, the questions in the poll, and I know this is a hot topic for most of our clients, measuring outcomes and impact. How, how do you approach that? You know, from the when you decide, yeah, this is a good fit, how do you start the conversation and how do you ensure that, you know, you get the kind, right kind of reporting and data without overburdening your nonprofit partners yeah it's a bit of a journey we're on as a team um partly because we've just redone our strategy so we're in the process of um putting together all those measurement frameworks um but we you know i think that where you have long-term engagements you're more likely to see a real outcome a real shift and nonprofits are more likely to be willing to kind of spend half an hour having an interview or, or giving um feedback through a survey. So where we have those long term engagements, um, we're doing that more formal evaluation with a survey, um, measuring things like, has your team increased their team capabilities through this initiative? Has your um, have your organisational processes and systems improved as a result of this engagement? Um, have your has your organisational performance actually changed? Are you more effective, more efficient? Um, so we really want to start to look at those things um, because if we're not doing that, then like why are we doing it really? Um, and I, and I think that's that's such a big shift because um, from from kind of just a pure engagement lens where you have a program, really kind of all all the programs are working towards this one goal of helping nonprofits be healthy, and more effective, and more collaborative. Um, and we want to learn. Like we're not going to get it right the first time perhaps like ways of working coaching is going to be the most impactful and we should just pull all our resources into that. Um, so we also want to be able to compare across initiatives. Yeah, I think this is, you know, it's, 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 it's a, an area that's often cited as a shortcoming in the social impact sector where folks in the sector, unfortunately, are not doing a great job at connecting business value to their programs which at the end of the day are as part of the way you're going to get more investment for your programs be able to do more is we can actually show the impacts the business value as well and you know what it means for the nonprofit partners but also for your people internally leadership skills um all those things so reporting and capturing this without obviously sending a nonprofit a 50 page report for mm -hmm. every skilled volunteering project is crucial mm -hmm. um and it's something that everyone is really collaborating on we have a great client community where we share those ideas and best practices. And we look to organizations like yourselves to help us to get into this. It's something that really worked well for us. Um, and how can we implement that into the technology as well? Um, mm. Any specific examples? Like I know you mentioned previously, we had a conversation, you had a great example. This is more of an individual, but uh, an individual that worked with the Natural History Museum, was it? Where you built something out? That was a great story. Yeah. Um, so, this is another, well, it was through Engage for Good, our formal program where we match, but um, so Jeff, one of our employees, he is a data scientist and we paired him with the Australian Museum to look at um, developing an AI model for detecting frog species. And um, so he worked with them for kind of six months on developing this model and um, got to a point where they were able to have a proof of concept, apply for a grant and be able to then get it um, paid. And I, I believe he's now a paid consultant on that project. Um, so it's it's quite a cool um, story. Um, he, I think the difference with him, he was just so invested. He was so passionate about frogs. I don't know how yeah. I did that matchmaking um, so well, but um, <laughs> you know, that long-term relationship has allowed him to really have a massive impact um, with the Australian Museum and has also led to quite a cool outcome for him having a little side gig um, because the you know the the scope of the project is much beyond volunteering hours. Yeah, it sounds like a real partnership, a frog, frog <laughs> partnership. It's fantastic. I love that story. Yeah. 
but again, it comes back to giving that, that uh, blended approach of having your corporate you know, product focus uh, projects, as well as your em employee individual projects, where you're going to gather these stories. You can't, you know, you shouldn't eliminate one or the other. It should be a combination um, of both. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. and I think, you know, we still, we still need to figure out for those employees who aren't connected to a nonprofit already, how do they get connected to nonprofits? Um, you know, there's, there's an element of kind of go out into your community, find what you're passionate about, but um, you know, not everyone has the the time or know how to do that. So that's where platforms like Benemity are very helpful in, you know, just exploring different options that are out there. Absolutely. I think that's, you know, when you're, you're able to get those initial volunteers, but this is the first time they're volunteering. And we saw a huge uptick in the last year of people taking that first step of volunteering. How do we then take them along that engagement journey to become impact champions themselves, where they're actively speaking to nonprofits and coming back and asking their peers to come out and help them on projects. Um, and organizations that are really empowering and encouraging that, like you know, the Atlassian and Microsofts of the world, have seen tremendous success there because their people really feel empowered to take action. And they know they can through these programs, which is such a huge benefit. Um, one final question before we open it up to the Q&A. Um, in an absolute blue sky world, what would you like to see? Like from a nonprofit perspective, from a technology perspective, what are you know, a couple of things that would make this or your role and, pro and the projects so much more successful? Yeah, I... Um one of the biggest challenges, which I've talked about it, is that, that thing of saying no. And, you know, nonprofits really need corporate um, help to um, have the skills and, and transfer those skills to their organisations. The thing is, is that it's very hard to know who to go to for what. And you don't want to have to apply to a million different programs as a nonprofit um, to to get the right help. And so I'd love to I'd love to see eventually. Um, anyone who wants to brainstorm with me, um, please contact me after. But how we can create that space where nonprofits can go and say, okay, I need help with teamwork and collaboration. Atlassian's the company. I need help with CRM's. Salesforce is the company or HubSpot's the company. You know, I um, we get so many requests for CRM's and we don't, that's not our software. Um, and, and, you know, I, I don't blame people. I didn't even know what a CRM was when I started work. So, you know, yeah. I, I absolutely don't blame people, but if there was a clear way for nonprofits and globally to be able to see who's doing what in this space and where can I get help, um, I think that would save a lot of us. Uh, it would save us a lot of time and, and also nonprofits a lot of time. Yeah, absolutely. I'm pretty sure you could hack um, Jira to be a CRM. You could hack Jira to do pretty I've much tried. Anything. It's not the best. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it as soon as I started it last year. <laughs> um, but yes, and I think that was the original concept from TechSoup, who's a partner of ours with our vetting and validation, but especially for technology products, they try to put that in place where it made a central place for, for nonprofits to reach out to. But that is where we're also going with the power of technology at Benevity is trying to make it easier for nonprofit through our entire client community to find those resources and support they need globally. And that's why we launched a, uh, a client platform community as well, where our clients can interact with each other and hopefully um, collaborate on some of these more pressing issues. So hopefully the future gets us there, but it is a massive, robust challenge to tackle. Um, cool. Let's jump over to Q&A. Please, if any of you on the call have any specific questions for Lauren or, or for myself, uh, please post it in the Q&A channel there. We do have one already here from Sophie. Um, so Lauren, you said you'd open it up uh, to not not for profits to apply and the floodgates opened could you describe this process did you just share the plan on atlassian's website or was there a direct reach out like a grants form how did you how did you open up the floodgates <laughs> um not to be advised but um the the <laughs> um the way i did it was it was on our website and we used Jira service management <laughs> product plug um <laughs> didn't mean to but uh, yeah. um Gear service management is designed to have a form and people apply and then there's basically workflows to be able to um, triage those different applications and, and um, work them through a workflow to be able to accept or reject all of that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of channels to promote it, um, LinkedIn has been the best, um, have found that really helpful and, you know, we've got a team of 25. So with everyone's personal LinkedIn, that gets pretty far. Um, but I think 
over time we um, built a mailing list because um, there was lots of lots of interest and so we were able to develop that that mailing list um, it's funny you mention it because now I've got new programs um, I actually need to develop these new approaches so um, I don't know uh, open open to ideas on that one as well and how we get the word out yeah um, it is often a way you know we, we often see clients they want to do amazing things but they they expect the nonprofits to just come st uh, streaming to them there is definitely still a communication aspect that has to occur as well and get your employees out get your employees talking about it absolutely on LinkedIn but also if you ask your employees they may definitely help you but if you don't ask them if they're not aware of the program you know th that's such a broad reach from your people um great question here from Tufik actually that's that's really um, interesting have you faced a situation where your volunteers provided feedback that they would like to volunteer with a different nonprofit or sector next time rather than continuing with the same organization or sector because that's a challenge to building those long-term uh, skills transfer you mentioned with and relationships yeah we, we definitely get that there are people who don't they they have their interests they have their areas of passion um and initially we tried to match that quite closely but we found that like matching the skills was much more important i think that there's an element here where you say you know at last focuses on education most people care about education i mean you'd be strange if you're like i hate education but um there are some people who are like just so passionate about animals and so in that instance that's where we go that's we don't have those contacts um please find a local community and we'll provide you the resources to go and help them do that. Um, but for the most part, we find people are quite happy to work with our partners, um, especially because it's already done for them. Um, I hope I hope I answered that question. Yeah, that's great. And I think to think as well, when, you know, when you have a, um, a great holistic program like Atlassian does, if that individual wants to go find their own volunteering activities or their own profits, they can do that on their own, you know, they're able to volunteer as uh, the time they have five days, I think a year, right? You have for volunteering five days a year. Um, they can donate to the organizations they want to. So the choice is absolutely there. If you know, that wasn't the right fit for them. Mm. Um, a question from Bonnie. Hey, Bonnie, uh, Lauren, you mentioned hours of impact. Do you follow any of the frameworks like B4SI for your reporting or, or do you have, have you developed your own metrics and, and measurements? No, we don't follow that specific methodology. Um, we worked with the Social Impact Hub to come up with our own and part, part of the reason for developing our own framework is that we, we do quite a lot of different initiatives. And so we were trying to come up with something that was quite unique to, to what we wanted to measure. The other thing is like we're not we're not looking to measure this because we need to report to anyone in particular. We want to know because we want to know if we've actually made an impact and if we need to change a program or get rid of a program or put more resources somewhere else. So um, I think that that intention really changes how you measure. We obviously want it to be rigorous um, and you know, uh, valid. Um, but I think because of that, because we're we're evaluating for learning, it means that we're much more likely to talk about our mistakes and um, and change it as opposed to if we're reporting to kind of be scrutinised by by others. Um, I don't know about business for social impact as a framework, so I can't um, speak to it. But um, I'm really I'm really grateful that we're in that position where we're not actually required to. To report on it in that way um we do re report to our board on our partners and whether they've achieved their objectives so it's very um it's a very partner-centric approach and that's really important that they're on track to achieve the objectives that they identified um but it's not anything prescribed by us mm -hmm. that's really you know the authentic approach you want to see the true impact it's less about you know being able to put a report out that's um, that's great to hear um there's a question from the nonprofit side what's the best follow-ups we can do after someone has volunteered for us to help encourage future volunteers um what do you suggest linkedin post testimonials what works well yeah we um as well as um social posts we um encourage a lot of internal blogs um that's a very like 
that Lassian cultural thing. I don't know if you have something similar or like internal Yammer channels or Slack channels or things like that, or getting up at a town hall meeting and talking to their team. We encourage that a lot and we've just included it in our rewards framework. So if you um, if you just are learning about something, then you get small rewards. But if you're sharing that um, you've done something and you're encouraging others, you get other rewards. So I think if you can try and um, build it into any kind of incentive programs, that piece as well, it's really important. Fantastic. Um, so I want to do a, a quick recap um, just on the key points that we covered here today. Um, you talked specifically about, you know, focus on what you're able to offer from your organization. What is our core focus as a company? What products are we offering? How can that benefit the nonprofit uh, sector versus being too broad? So, you know, align the skills that you have internally with what the needs might be. Is that accurate? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, working more closely with your partners. So when you have those corporate partners where you may already be granting funds to them, they may be long-term partnerships, multi-year partnerships, that's where you're going to have the initial insight to really add value because you already understand their operations, how, they, how they're functioning, what their mission is. Um, anything else you want to add there for a recap um, that's really the, the key points to take away? Um, yeah, I think just... Um... It's funny, I was, you know, on a call for this and we're talking about how we can scale the programs and I'm like, I've just started them and I was like, I'm not making that same mistake again. I think like, you know, skill volunteering should be first and foremost about impact. There are plenty of other ways to engage employees at scale. Um, you know, your, your kind of team volunteering, traditional giving, campaigns, fundraisers, that kind of thing. Um, but I think like, there's there's a lot of investment in school volunteering and so make sure that you're getting the outcomes that you want um and and i think sometimes that means pushing back on um goals that are that are imposed on you around skill volunteering that might incentivize you to do other things i had goals of 100 projects and 100 organizations and you know i've I was too um, naive and, and accepted those goals, but um, I think like be really uh, considered when you're setting those goals and targets um, and be willing to change them as well if they're not right. Um, we don't have goals around outcomes now because we want those things to be authentic, to learn, to understand if we're making impact, but we do have goals around delivering and, and delivering those project, um, those programs um, at a high quality. So that would be my only other tip. Think about how you're measuring your success. Real impact, real authentic impact versus just numbers. Exactly. Um, well, thank you so much, Lauren. We really appreciate your time and your insights. It is super valuable for the community um, and for everyone to be able to elevate their programs. If anybody has follow-up questions for Lauren, uh, you will have our email um, after the event as well as the recording. Um, and as always, if you'd like to learn more about Benevity, the technology solutions that can help you underpin these programs, please reach out and we can set something up. Well, thank you everyone for your time. And thanks so much again, Lauren, uh, for your insights and time today. Thanks, Chris, for having me. And thanks everyone for, for joining. Always a pleasure. Thanks everyone. Bye. See ya.